Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to process a stormy landscape in Lightroom. In this video tutorial, we're going to look at a processing example. So we're going to take this image here and see how we might process it. Now I've worked on this image a couple of times before and the first time I processed it I came up with this and it was just for a slideshow and I was relatively happy with it. Well today I went back and processed it again because I wanted to get a more moody sort of image. So this is my second attempt at processing this image. So from here we've come all the way to here. So I'm going to step you through how I processed the image this way so that you can see the choices that I made and the tools that I used in being able to bring detail out of the image. If you have a look here, you'll see that the foreground is really quite dark and there's a lot of lightness in the sky. Well, we're going to sort of reverse that and we're going to light the foreground a whole lot better, bring out some detail in the tree here and in the fence posts, and then send the sky to the back by darkening it. So I'm going to go step by step through the process so that you can see how you might process an image like this yourself in Lightroom. Now this is the original out of camera image in Lightroom and I'm in the develop module and we're just having a look right now at the histogram. Now this is an unusual histogram. You won't always see a histogram that has bumps at both ends, but what we're seeing is we've got a lot of detail in the shadows and a lot of detail in the lighter areas of the image and not much in the middle. Well, we're going to start with the basic panel and you can see that we've already got a white balance setting in because this is a DNG or a raw file. So this is the as shot white balance and I'm suspecting that it was probably something like auto or daylight, but we could actually change the image quite a bit if we choose a different white balance setting. And if you want to warm up an image, for example, make it a little bit warmer, a little bit pinkier, then choosing a white balance setting like cloudy or shade is a really good option. So I think I'll settle for cloudy on this. This one's going to end up perhaps a little bit warmer than the previous version that we saw, but we could alter that always by changing the temperature ourselves. I'm going to look at exposure. So I'm actually going to boost the exposure just a little bit on this image because then I'm going to bring down some of the other sliders. So I want to bring down the highlights and the whites. So I want to bring those in. So we're getting some detail back in the very lightest areas of the image and that is in particular in the clouds because they really are extremely interesting clouds. They were very threatening, big, bold clouds. Now we'll look at the shadows. Well, the shadow area is all in this foreground. So if we want to bring a little bit more detail and light into the foreground, well, that's what's being affected by the shadows. So I'm going to back the shadows off a little bit, but certainly we're in the plus 43. So we're in the light and shadows area. Let's have a look at blacks. Anytime you adjust shadows or blacks, you're going to flatten the contrast in the image. Let's just take the blacks all the way up here. You can see that we've got very little contrast left here because everything's going light. But I'm just going to back the blacks off a little bit and I'm going to build some contrast back in by adjusting the contrast slider. You can see that that's actually having a darkening effect too because it's starting to create some difference between the lights and the darks. That's what contrast is. Now we can also bring some contrast into the image by using clarity. Clarity is a mid-tone contrast adjustment. It actually is going to add some contrast into the mid-tones and that's pretty much into this grassy area here. So we're seeing a, quite an impact on the image by increasing clarity. Let's look at vibrance. Well, vibrance is going to saturate under saturated colors wound all the way up. We're building these greens into this image. Now, vibrance is a setting that we can't get to later on. And we're going to do some adjustments in a minute using the adjustment brush and also the graduated filter. But you'll see that although we can get to clarity and saturation here, there is no vibrance setting. So vibrance, the only shot we have at vibrance is here in the basic panel. 
So if we want any vibrance adjustment, we're going to have to use it here. And then of course we have saturation. Well, I'm not going to use saturation right now. I'm going to look at the tone curve though, and I'm going to see what these two options will give me, medium contrast and strong contrast. Well, I'm thinking medium contrast, if anything. I don't want to go much stronger than that. So there's the first adjustment that I'll make to the image just to give me a starting point. And the next adjustment, we're going to start working on the sky. Now for the sky, we have two options. We can use the graduated filter or we could use the adjustment brush. If we use the graduated filter, we're probably going to have to come back in and also use the adjustment brush across the horizon. So let's see how we do that. I'm going to click on the graduated filter to select it and I'm going to drag down to create the graduated filter adjustment. Now because this is a fairly tight change from sky to background, I want a very tight change in my graduated filter. So I'm going to only drag it a little way. I'm going to make sure that it's placed as near as it can be across this slightly uneven horizon because anywhere that I don't get it right, I'm going to have to fix with the adjustment brush later on if it doesn't look as good as it should. So let's just say that we've got it in a good position and rotate it a little bit if we need to. Now, because I dragged this down, because I clicked and dragged downwards, the graduated filter is attached up here and it's going to be full force in this area and it's going to change to be not in force at all over this small graduated area. That's why I needed it to be a very quick change because we've got a very distinct border between sky and grass. But also because I dragged down, you know that we're going to be affecting just the top part of the image. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is to decrease the exposure because I want some sky back. And as I do this, let's just wind it all the way down. You'll see that we're getting slightly darkened area here and lighter area here. These are the areas we're going to have to potentially fix up later on with the adjustment brush to compensate for what we're doing. To a certain extent, though, it's going to depend on just how far we go down with exposure as we work. We can boost the contrast and contrast is giving us quite a nice effect here. We can work on the highlights, darken the highlights or lighten the highlights or just leave them exactly where they were. Ditto with the shadows. Well, we probably don't want to bring detail out of the shadows. We probably want the shadows to be back where they started at or perhaps even a little darker. If I want to reset any of these sliders at any time, just double click on the sliders name. Clarity is going to add some really, really threatening detail to these clouds. I've wound it all the way up to 100, that's too far, but you can see that it's crisp up the detail here. So given that these are some really interesting clouds with some fairly detailed areas, I think a little bit of extra clarity will work. Saturation. Well, I probably don't want to bring in much saturation, if any at all. I'm also thinking that this is probably a little bit on the brown side in the sky, so I think I need to cool it down a little bit, which is dragging the sky into the blue area. So just decreasing the temperature a little bit. I can also add some color into the sky by clicking on the color swatch. For this, I'm only going to need a very small amount of color because otherwise it's going to be too much. But I can come in here and see if any of these colors are going to work with the sky. And I always like to see either slightly neutral skies or skies with a little bit of yellow in them. Just find them way more interesting skies. But you can choose a color that suits you. I'm going to add a little bit of color in there. Now, if I'm happy with that, I'm going to click Done. And now we need to address what's happening here along the horizon in the image. So I'm just going to zoom in here. I've got my zoom on 4 to 1. I think 2 to 1 is going to be a better choice for this. This image is very noisy because it's been shot at a very, very high ISO. Let's just click on the Adjustment Brush. Let's reduce its size. 
add quite a feather to it. I'm probably going to reduce its flow down just a little bit and I want to auto mask it as well. And I want to select along this area of the image, just along the horizon where we copped a little bit too much darkening effect from the sky fix. To move the image as I work, I'm just holding the space bar that changes the brush from being the adjustment brush into the hand tool. I'm just going to select along here. I'm looking to go up to this point to where we started to have the graduated filter go in the other direction actually have an unpleasant lightning effect on the image. I'm just going to zoom back out here and see how much, no, we've still got a bit more to go. I think we're probably in about neutral territory now. Let's back off here. Now I'm going to deselect show selected mask overlay and for this we need to do the opposite of what we did with the sky. So we took the exposure down before, we're going to increase the exposure a little bit. Probably going to back off the contrast a little bit. Back off clarity. Anything that we did to the graduated filter we're now going to do the negative with this area here just to try and neutralize this effect. And if I'm happy, I'll just click done. So let's just see what we did here. This is how it was before, quite a bit darker than it is now. And now it's back to blending in with the surrounding area. Now we have to deal with this where we over lightened the area. Again, adjustment brush, again, click to peg it down. And now I'm just going to Make sure I select these areas of the sky. And again, the auto mask is really helping me here because I'm able to limit my selection to the areas where we had the problem and not bleeding into the grass, which is actually looking pretty okay. Just going to check and make sure that we've got all of this. Let's zoom out and that we've still got a bit further to go here. We do want to have a bit of a feather on this brush though because we don't want it to be too harsh because we're trying to blend these areas in. Now for this area, this is overly light. It's what the sky was before. So whatever we did to the sky before is what we do to this area. And really the biggest thing that we're going to do is to bring down the exposure. But we're going to have to be careful that we don't bring it down too far and we'll up the contrast a little bit. Now this is going to need a little bit of extra fixing so I'm going to come in here with the eraser tool now. Quite a big feather. I'm just going to erase off the top edge of this where the image is getting two hits with this fix. So anywhere where I see a darkening along that edge, a distinct darkening, I just want to brush it out. Now you're going to be more careful than me. You just spend a little bit more time doing this. And there's my adjustment. So what I've done here is I've taken this from this to blending it in a whole lot better. Still a little bit of work to do there, but it's pretty good. Now, one of the other things I wanted to do was to bring some detail back into the tree. And again, we can do that with the adjustment brush. Again, a really large brush and auto mask here because we want to be able to click on the tree and have Lightroom do the selecting for us. Again, all I'm doing is making sure that when I click, I'm clicking on a black or dark leaf to make sure that Lightroom is doing the selection for me. 
I'm going to go across to the eraser. I don't actually want to bring in this tree area at the back along the horizon, so I'm just going to readjust my eraser brush here and just take this out of the selection. Turn off the mask overlay, so the mask overlay is gone, so now I can see what I'm doing to the tree. And I'm just going to lighten it a little bit, bring a bit of detail out of the shadows, perhaps a little extra clarity. If I want to, I can do something similar with the fence posts. So I can go across and select each of these fence posts. Again, auto mask, don't want a very big feather at all. Pin it down and then just draw over it. And I'll always go in with the mask overlay shown here so I can make sure that I'm making an appropriate selection, particularly when I have auto mask turned on, just make sure I didn't get something that I didn't expect to affect. If I need to erase even at this point, just hold down the Alt key to switch from the painting on of the mask to actually removing it. This brings up the eraser for me. Move all the way across, pick up all of these fence posts. Okay, let's zoom back out again, making sure all our fence posts are red before we turn off our mask overlay. So here again, I'm going to bring out a little detail if I can by lightening these fence posts. Perhaps a tiny little bit of increased exposure. And then if I want to, add a bit of color to them. So I'm going to select my sort of orange color. If that's too much, I can just wind down the saturation by just dragging on this saturation slider. It's a bit easier than having to drag in this window here. And so let's click Done. Now I'm thinking I could also work a little bit on the foreground grass. And for that, I'm going to use the adjustment brush this time because I used the graduated filter on the sky. I'll use the adjustment brush on the grass. So I'm going to peg my position here. I'm going to turn auto mask off because right now I want to select everything in this area. And I can turn auto mask back on again when I want to do the edge near the horizon. It's just picking the tool and using something that works well for making a really big selection and then using something different to make a more fine selection across the edge. Okay, so now let's see what we can do with our grass. Let's bring up some highlights perhaps, add a little bit of clarity, maybe a little extra contrast. And if we want to, we can again bring in some color. Now if I add in a magenta color, I'm going to make this a more yellowy brown because that's sort of neutralizing the green. If I add in some green, I'm going to make it look more spring. Well, I'm liking my sort of brown colors here. So I'm going to add a little bit of this magenta in and maybe back off the saturation to actually wipe out some of that green too. So again, I'm getting a moodier effect. So let's see the before and after, which I can get to by pressing the backslash key. This is the before image and this is the after image. Now you can see that we've taken this image in totally different direction. It started off with a darker foreground and a very light or bright sky. Well, we've reversed that. We've added some lightning effect into the foreground and just sent the sky to be a sort of moody, reddy, blue sort of color. You've got tools here that allow you to make some really creative adjustments in your images. You can relight your images. You can draw attention to different areas of the image. There's a lot of power here in Lightroom for fixing your images. And this is just one of the possible fixes for this image. Remember earlier we saw what I'd done with the image previously. This was my lighter fix. This was a heavier fix that I'd done earlier today. Well, we've taken it in a slightly different direction again here. 
It's the same basic image, but it's given us a lot of different looks. And it's all done in the Develop module here in Lightroom. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.